I'm here with Dan Schluter, our village president of Plover, and Dan Mahoney, our village administrator. Uh, these guys come out for a lot of our events and stuff that we have here at the store, and this is a great one. We've got, this is our third time doing it. We're excited about it. It's our safety fair. So we've got EMS, EMTs, Village of Plover. We got Rossholt, surrounding fire departments and EMS people. Uh, we had the flight helicopter come in from uh, Spirus up in Wausau. All kinds of stuff going on, demonstrations, kids face painting, got the Boys and Girls Club here, and they're doing all kinds of uh, selling brats and earning some money there. And we got just fantastic ministry health cares here, a lot of other agencies, uh, Red Cross, and so, but I'm really happy to have these guys here. and. Uh, their big reason why I decided to move uh, our facility here almost eight years ago to Plover. So these guys were with me for the groundbreaking. It was, it's just been great. The HH Development Crossroads Commons to the Village Park of Plover here. Uh, I just couldn't be happier being here. I mean, I get pumped up every day when I drive here to work and I pull in and uh, we're open for business. So um, I'm just really, really happy to be here. You started at Allmark by Village Park at Plover. Your building was the first building in the park at Village Park at Plover, and from there on at Cannonball. We thank you for that, Mark. I couldn't be happier. We got a lot of kids here. We got Kids ID going on. We got McGruff the Crime Dog. We got the canine unit. We got uh, bicycle safety, bicycle helmet uh, fitting, uh, child care seats, uh, you know, so you can drive by and make sure that you got your seat properly put in your car for your kids. This is the right place to be and uh, especially with the families and the kids and you know it's great to see all these people coming out today for our safety fair so. Uh, with the impetus of your development obviously this is now a much changed corridor it's a great retail center uh, located at the corner of uh, County Trunk Highway B and I-39 and we've got a ton of wonderful businesses in here and you know mark your business again is a keystone of that and we're just prou so proud to basically be able to uh, have a, a fantastic commercial type of development that really has a lot of aesthetics in it as well and uh, just a beautiful development and actually coming up there's going to be a couple of new developments coming forward we're looking at some plans for a smaller office building that's over by the canopy awesome. and then uh, basically on the southern part of the property there's some um, plans coming forward for some uh, um, high-end multiple family development that we're looking out at out at the south end so we're very excited to keep things going in village park they're hugely involved with the development of plover Plover, Wisconsin, and the surrounding communities, and I, these are these are just great guys. So happy to have you guys here. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. We'll continue to grow in Plover and have a big time. Appreciate you everything great. you've done. Mark. Thanks, guys. You bet. So uh, we got this thing restickered up and repurposed now for the village of Plover. We do. Yep. Uh, we got a we got this vehicle in operation to respond to uh, events, uh, emergency events in the village of Plover, EMS events. Uh, it's, it's a great, great vehicle to have. It's greatly appreciated that, that Mark Motors is supporting us in this effort. Uh, in the past, it was a, a first responder unit that we ran out here and a lot of private vehicle use. So this is really going to allow us to do some things that we haven't been able to in the past. Yeah, how many calls did you guys, I think you guys had over 600 calls last year though? It was up to a, uh, close to 700 calls. And this year, uh, to date, we're actually tracking about 100 calls over last year at this time. Wow. You know, what's really nice about this is a four-wheel drive. It'll be able to get, you know, places that a lot of other vehicles can't get to, you know. Absolutely. And it, many times there's uh, situations where an ambulance can't get off-road, and this will allow us to get back to those patients and even, uh, with, a, with the use of a longboard or a basket, transport them out. Well, we're really glad because this is a partnership with Toyota and uh, National, and uh, it's been really good. We've had uh, one in place for about the last seven years, and uh, the reason why I wanted to do it is my dad had a heart attack out on a golf course in Iowa in the spring of the year in 1971, and the ambulance got stuck three times trying to get to him. And I think if we'd have had something like this, maybe it would have been a better chance for him to survive. Sure. So uh, that's why I'm really, really excited about you guys having this and being able to utilize it. You know, if it saves one life, it's all worth it. So thanks for coming out. Thanks for bringing the vehicle. 
Thanks for bringing all these guys. We got to go over and find out who the heck we got. Is this your? Is this some of your staff this here? Some of the staff, both player and EMS. Well, we got to go check this out. This is EMS and the uh, Plover Fire Department group. So we're going to find out who we got here. I'm Robin Fall, and I'm a probationary EMS member with Plover. All right. Uh, Lieutenant Ethan Meadow, uh, firefighter EMT with the Village of Plover. Lieutenant, all right. And we got some firefighters and stuff here. Uh, Mike Herbspeck, firefighter MPO. All right. Well, there's another lieutenant. Lieutenant Brandon Krzyzewski, lieutenant of fire. Are you related to Tim? Yes, my dad. That's your dad? Yep. Is that a good thing? It's all right, I huh? guess. Huh? Depends on which day it is. <laughs> he doesn't cut you any slack, does he? Nope. No. No. <laughs> and firefighter Jordan? Jordan Rouse. Jordan, you've been on what, a year, year, year and a half? Year and a half about. All right. In July, yeah. So you guys teach, you teaching these guys anything? Yeah, teaching huh? them the new knowledge that they don't have. Oh, the new knowledge. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you. We got a couple more guys here. Jim Splina, firefighter and EMT. So I've been doing that about three and a half years now. Awesome. Good job, man. Thanks a lot. And we got Tony. Yeah, Tony Kalaje. Tony Kalaje. I like that name. Tony Kalaje. I like that. Is that Irish or? Uh, Polish. A little bit. That's good because I'm 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 Polish and Ukrainian. So, really? yep, that's good. And Tony, how long have you been on the department? Three years. Three years. Did you guys come together? Uh, I did EMS for about a year, then got on a fire as well. So about three and a half for EMS, about three fire. I thought maybe you guys were a package deal or something. You came. No. So you've been on longer than him? Uh, a little bit. So you got a little seniority then, or? Yes, I do. All right. <laughs> what do you think about that? Sure, why not? <laughs> okay. Hey guys, thanks a lot for coming out. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for bringing all the fire apparatus out here. So how, do, how did you how did you like it? How did I like this? Yeah. Um, it's it's a reality check. Yeah. It really is. So uh, who's this guy next to you? This is Nicholas. Is this, this is your the only son? Time he gets to sit in the front seat with me. Nicholas, where do you where do you go to school? St. Bronze. St. Bronze? What grade are you in? First. First grade? How do you think she did driving here? Terrible. Terrible? <laughs> are you gonna try it? No. I think you should. Let's see if you can drive better your mom. No. No? Huh? I bet you can. I bet I can. <laughs> <laughs> did you get your ID done? Almost done? All right. Well, thanks for coming to see us today. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm Max Lundgren. And what do you do? Um, well, I'm on the DI team. What's the DI team? Uh, Tell me about it. Destination Imagination. It's a, a problem-solving based group. And uh, it's all over the world. And we were recently in a state competition, and we were lucky enough to place second. And we get to go down to Globals, which is in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, we get to compete uh, against countries all over the world. Awesome. So are these uh, some of your... Uh... These, are, these are the other three team members, yeah. And what are you guys selling today? Today we're selling candy necklaces. All right, well, let's go talk to the girls, too. And what's your name? <laughs> Sydney. Sydney? And Sydney, where do you go to school? Pacelli. Pacelli, and what grade are you in? I'm a senior. Senior? Yep. Already? Yep. Graduate in a couple weeks. Yeah, only about two days of school left. All right, good for you, huh? You're excited, you're smiling. And who's this? Katie Olson. And Katie, what grade are you in? I'm a senior too. You're graduating too? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, now tell us what you got, what you're selling here. Um, right here we have candy necklaces. We are on our way to Globals in Tennessee. So we need to raise a lot of money to get there. So this is one of our fundraisers. And we're also taking $5 donations and then your name can go in for winning a $50 a Furniture and Appliance Mart gift card. Well, that's nice. Yeah. The Fonte boys over there, huh? Oh, yeah. Taking care of you. Oh, yeah. Big sure. supporters of Pacelli. Of course. That's good. And then we got another one here. Courtney Kijewski. Are you a senior, too? Yes, I am. <laughs> are you a senior? Yeah, I'm a senior? You guys are all graduating? Yep. yep. So uh, now, when are you going down to this competition? We leave on Tuesday the 21st. Now, where are you headed? To Knoxville, Tennessee. 
Oh, are you going to take any shows then? Or? Um, well, we are going to present um, our DI project in Knoxville, Tennessee to all the other DI teams. It's our project for the year, so. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about the project, what you guys are doing? Um, what we did was we raised $10,700 to purchase the driving simulator, and then we took it around to different businesses and schools and educated them on the consequences of distracted and impaired driving. Wow, that's amazing. And then we also raised enough so we could buy a projector and a screen so that schools that don't have the high definition that the simulator needs, they can still be presented to because we have the extra supply. Now, will you be able to uh, garner any uh, additional funds for future projects? Um, well, actually, there's, there's now going to be a uh, team at Pacelli who's going to be called the One Simple Decision Team and they're going to be able to take the simulator around and kind of carry on our legacy and carry on our work. Wow, fantastic. I'm really proud of you guys. Oh, thank you. Nice job everybody and I wish you guys all the best. Going, are you all going to school next year? What's yes. happening? Yep. Where are you going? I'm going to UWSP to yep. study communicative disorders. Oh, okay. And you? I'm going to UW Oshkosh and I don't know what I'll be studying yet. <laughs> studying just general studies right yep. now? As of right now, yeah. <laughs> That's all right though. Sometimes you got to figure out what's going on before, yeah. How about you? Interest? I'm going to Chippewa Valley Tech College over in Eau Claire and I'm going for firefighting and EMT. All right. So. Yeah, we got a lot of firefighters and EMTs <laughs> out here today. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I was a volunteer fireman for 14 years, so. And what are you going to be doing? Um, I'm going to Mid-State and Rapids next year for the criminal justice program. Really? So what are you, what are you going to try and... I yeah. just I want to be an officer. Police officer? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah. Keep up the good work. We'll see if we can get some more people over here to, to contribute. So. That would be great. Yeah, and I'll be back to put some more money in for you. Thank you. i got to find out. What's your name? Shania. Shania? And where do you go to school? Nakusa, and what grade are you in? Fourth. Fourth, and you just had your ID done? Did you do good? Oh, look at all your fingerprints, too. Isn't that cool? That's pretty neat, and they got a good picture of you, a nice smile. All right, are you having fun? All right. <laughs> We got to find out who we got here. We got one of the guys from the Sheriff's Department. I'm Sergeant Mike Lucas from the Sheriff's Office. Thanks, Mike. Deputy Tyler Miller. Deputy Tyler Miller, and, and uh, can you just uh, Hang on and sure. just maybe speak about what's going on and, and how this comes about. I mean, as far as what you guys are doing and sure. how important this is. This, uh, we've been doing through here for the safety event for quite a few years in regards to child identification and child um, um, identif or fingerprints. Uh, we got a new system here actually that actually is very nice because what we can do is we can um, get their fingerprints and a photo for an identification and it can be immediately downloaded in regards to any law enforcement agency, and it can also be downloaded to the John Walsh Missing and Exploited Children if, if a child becomes missing or wow. we need some kind of identification. Like yep, so it's a, it's a real fast acting, so if a child does go missing, um, they, can, they can give that right to the police, so they got a picture, they got identification in regards to fingerprints, and as everybody knows, your fingerprints don't change. You know, as you get older, they get bigger, but the loops and whirls and all the characteristics don't change. So that's why we do it now and then we update them when they get older in you know, sixth, seventh grade. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks you guys for coming out and doing this. It's a great service. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. You betcha. We want to find out who we have here. Trudy Peters. And Trudy, where are you from? Stockton EMS. Okay, and what, what actually do you do? With I am actually the EMS captain, and we respond with the ambulance whenever there's a page in the town of Stockton, and we provide basic life support before the ambulance arrives. Awesome. Yeah. So how long have you been doing that? You're going to make me look old. Um, I've been doing it 21 years. So you were like 10 or something? Something like that. <laughs> wow, you got started at an early age. I did. We, I have to still get you a kid's ID. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for being here. And who, who do we have here? Lisa Hansen. And you work with this gal? Yes, I do. Is that a good thing? It's a good thing. <laughs> She's teaching me everything I know. And what, what do you do there? I do the exact same thing as her. We just go to the accident scenes when we're paged and um, help out before the ambulance gets there. So is this volunteer? Uh, yep, yes it is. Wow, that's fantastic. Thanks for doing that. We really appreciate you being here. And Trudy, now, 
Is this your regular job then? No, it's not. I also work full time. And what do you do? I am the branch coordinator for Central City Credit Union at the SPASH branch. Awesome. So now, what, how did you happen to decide to get involved with the EMS? Huh. A uh, number of years ago, they were starting an EMS group in the village of Amherst, and they asked my husband and I if we wanted to join and go through the classes. So we did in 1991. My husband and I both do this. He's also a fire captain. So, and we raised four kids to come up and do it too. My uh, heart goes out to you guys. Thanks for all you do. And it's a great service that you provide, so appreciate it. Who's this guy? I'm Josh. Josh, where are you from? I'm from Plover. And where do you go to school? Uh, Pacelli High School. Are you, uh, what grade? I am a sophomore. A sophomore? Yes. So you got a couple more years yet? Yes. Sell these candy bars? Yep. Hopefully before the two years are up? Yeah. Okay. And um, who, who's your capable uh, uh, leader here, assistant? You can ask her her name. All right. Pretty sure. I am Paula, and I'm a junior at Pacelli High School, so I have one more year there. And now tell me, tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing here and what you're trying to raise money for. So what we're raising money for is a trip to Steubenville where uh, students or youth people will go to so that they can learn more about their faith and that. And from year to year, it does change places, but this is like a fundraiser for it. So is it like a youth gathering? Yes. And then how many, how many will probably be there? It depends. It could be like thousands? It could be, yes. Wow, so how long of a trip is it? He would know more about that. Uh, <laughs> the trip is a week long. A whole week? Yes, a week long, spent at an amusement park. Um, and we gather there about, I think, once a day and have mass uh, with the bishop from the county that it's in. Wow, so they do some like team building and stuff? And yes. Faith building? Yes. Well, fantastic. Congratulations to both of you, and uh, I'll have to come back and get one of these diet candy bars. <laughs> I'm Jeff Jester. I'm the RSVP director for Portage County. All right, and who's this guy? I'm David Damchik. I'm the mobility management director for Portage County. Awesome. And? <laughs> Hi, I'm Barb Feltz. I'm the health promotion coordinator at the ADRC Lincoln Center in Portage County. And you're keeping these two guys in line, right? Mm-hmm. That's good. The woman's touch. You got to have that. Huh? That's why I always tell people that's why I keep my hair long on the top. It covers up the lumps. <laughs> I'm promoting falls prevention in the elder adults. Um, we have all kinds of the, the CDC study kit for falls prevention. And part of these, part, part of the falls prevention that's in this kit is on the table here. What are your risk factors for falls? Uh, what are the um, falls awareness, uh, what can you do to get up from a fall, so all with falls prevention. Also, I have a vital information program for the caregiver of the house. Um, the caregiver, if they're caring for an individual who is disabled or not able to speak for themselves, we have a packet of information that we can have filled out at the Lincoln Center. You can have all the vital information and it can even be, what do you do with your dog? And you take this and put all the information and have it on the refrigerator. And when something happens and the EMS comes, they take it off your refrigerator and they know everything and who's in the house. Wow, well that give them some peace of mind too, you know? It's like a lifeline. Lifeline. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks for coming out. I'm here with Mike Gross, and he is one of the, the head pilot? Lead pilot. Lead pilot yes. for the medevac unit out of uh, Spirus. And so I just want to find out a little bit more about the helicopter and what they're up to today. And we're glad to have them here for our safety fair. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you inviting us over here. Um, our aircraft is a uh, Bell 407, and we're stationed out of uh, Wausau. And, uh, so we respond to any scenes, uh, hospital transports and so forth, and um, basically our flight time from here was only about 15 minutes, so. Wow. Pretty much when we call, we're airborne in about five minutes and able to respond. We carry a crew of two. We have a nurse, a paramedic, and um, have all the, all the necessary equipment on board that we need. It all slides in 
from the side there, and there, there's a long cot that runs along the, uh, you know, traverses along the helicopter there inside. So it yep. looks it looks small, but it does its job. It's a very fast helicopter as well. So now, what's a craft like that cost fully fully equipped? Fully equipped with the medical interior, um, it's it's about 2.5, 2.7, something like that million. That's a, it's an amazing, amazing craft. You'll be able to get people transported in a critical situation. I mean, you're only what? How long will it take you to get from here to Wausau or here to Marshfield? Or yeah, if, from this location back to Wausau is about 15 minutes, and I'd say here from here to uh, Marshfield about 20. That's fantastic. And then, then again, too, it depends on the wind and weather and so forth if we have to deviate, but that's general flight time. For example, last year, how many calls did you guys end up having to go out on? Gosh, I don't remember how many total last year, but typically, I mean, it's it's usually average one a day, sometimes two a day. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes we get um, two or three in a day, and the next day there's nothing, and so you just never know. Now, if you have like multiple injuries or multiple uh, victims and stuff that are having a problem, are you able to get there? You just go transport them, drop them off, and then come back. Usually, if there's a uh, if there's multiple victims, if it's a severe uh, you know accident or so forth, we'll call other aircraft, either Marshfield, uh, Theta Star, or, some, or an aircraft out of Green Bay. So you guys get some good you know mutual aid support. Oh yeah, yeah. So no. there, there's it's not unusual that there will be sometimes up to three helicopters at a scene. Wow, now how long have you been doing this, Mike? Um, EMS work, about six years. Total time, it's been about 12. Now, is this a full-time job then for you and you're on call pretty much, or? Oh, this is full-time. We're just, we're just like a fire department. We're there 24-7, and we're based at the uh, airport there in Wausau. So now, how long are you on for so many days and then do you get a little time away, or? Typically, we run um, seven days on, seven days off, 12-hour shifts. Okay. So we have a total of four pilots, and then we rotate days to nights each time like that. Now, do you guys have ongoing, I imagine, ongoing intensive training and, oh, yes. and updates? And Every year, we have to, um, our company that we work for is Petroleum Helicopters Incorporated, and uh, we go down to Lafayette, Louisiana, and we get trained in uh, simulators and all emergency procedures and everything. Now, your uh, two assistants and stuff, now they, do they fly as well? No, they don't fly. They have nothing to do with flight, just like I have nothing to do with the medical part. So you stay with the craft pretty much, and then they're on the scene That's uh, doing, doing the EMS work. That's correct. And their, their training is quite intense as well, too. I think sometimes it's more than what we go through, but. I couldn't believe how uh, well, you guys came in and you just landed like right on the spot. I mean, it was, it was pretty neat. Well, that's what's good about, you know, a helicopter. I mean, we, it's very versatile. Um, most services require at least 100 feet by 100 feet landing zone area. And as long as you have that and the weather's good, I mean, it's, we land, as you can see, we landed fields, we land highways. Uh, a lot so, of the hospitals south are all rooftop landings, so we'll uh -huh. do rooftop landings. Wow. Now, that flies probably, what, about 150, 200 miles an hour? Typically, uh, this aircraft is, is about 120, 130 knots is what we can fly, which is about 150, 160 miles per hour. Now, how, where did you get your training? I was a uh, law enforcement. I was a state trooper in Alabama, and I flew for the state. Really? So, so what brought you up here? The job. Opportunity. Yep. So yeah, have you liked it? Oh yeah, nice area up here. Do you, do you eat a lot of cheese? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to have my daily cheese, otherwise I start getting the shakes. Yeah, I couldn't imagine anybody moving up here not liking it. <laughs> so. Well, we're glad you're here. Thanks for coming out. And this is such a special treat for the community and for the area, and we're glad to have you guys here. Well, thank and, you so uh, much. And we've... Thanks for coming. Okay, so who we got here? We got Scott. Scott Pop. yep. I'm the nurse paramedic for Wausau Hospital, and Jason, this is my partner, Jay Summers. Jay Summers. And Jay, what do you do? I'm the paramedic. You're a paramedic and yep. you're the nurse? Well, I'm both. You're both? Correct. So now when when you guys get to a scene and stuff, you guys are the ones that are getting right on top of it, assessing it, getting them stabilized, getting them all looked at, and vitals and all that stuff, right? Correct. Yep. Um, we're trained to the same level. We just have different titles. We uh, train on an annual basis. We have skills that we provide on a semi-annual basis. We go into the hospital, work in the OR, things like that, and me and Jay are trained to the exact same level. Um, advanced same life skills. Part. 
Yep. So now, how long have you guys been doing this? Um, this is my 13th year. I've been doing it for 20. For 20 and 13? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, how did you guys get involved in, in doing this line of work? Yeah, were you, are you also doing other things or strictly with, the, with this particular service? Um, I started out on my local fire department and continued my education until I got to this level. So was that a paid department or volunteer? volunteer? And where where was that at? Right in central Wisconsin. Yeah, I started out as a volunteer for five years and I went back to paramedic school and nursing school and fire school and then I just continued uh, my education and training. Well, that's pretty cool. Where did you take your fire school training? Uh, I took a lot of it through North Central and Mid-State. Oh, good. Yeah, did you have Jerry Murphy at all? No. One of your uh, uh, trainers? No, I did not. All right. I went through the Jerry Murphy school of, <laughs> of uh, the beating will continue until the attitude changes, but I had a lot of fun. And then tell me about uh, your experience. Me, I started out uh, in Toledo, Ohio as an EMT and uh, worked for inner city service there, private service, got my paramedic there. and. Uh, Moved up here to the Northwoods, uh, 97. Started with uh, Oneida County Ambulance up there, 911 truck, and been working there. I still work for them, uh, relief. And so you're transplanted like me, you know, yep. transplanted cheesehead now. Yep, transplant. Right. That's got kind of close quarters in there though, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. What we try to do is get everything done on the ground before we put them into the helicopter. Um, you know, then our transport times are pretty fast. You know, we can be back to Wausau in about 12 to 15 minutes. Um, so the goal is to stabilize beforehand and once we're in there we try to do as little as possible. Well I'll tell you what, you guys are providing a great service and we really appreciate you guys coming out today. What a treat for us having yep. you guys fly in. Thanks for having us. Yes, yeah, thank thanks you. for coming out, appreciate it. Yep. Keep up the good work. Thank yep. you. We're here with our head chefs from the Boys and Girls Club here in Portage County. Who we got here? Dawson Lewis. What is it? Dawson Lewis. Dawson Lewis? Mm -hmm. and, and where do you go to school? P.J. Jacobs. P.J. Jacobs, huh? And mm -hmm. what grade are you in? Seventh. Seventh grade, huh? Mm-hmm. And uh, where'd you get your cooking skills from? Runs in the family, I could Runs say. in the family? Your mom yeah. works at a bakery? My grandma owns it. Your grandma owns a bakery? Mm-hmm. Boy, I gotta go see her. Can you <laughs> tell I need a couple more donuts? <laughs> huh? So uh, how's, how's the club? You like the club? Yeah. Which fun. one do you go to, usually? The downtown. Downtown King club? Center. Yeah. The teen center? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Hopefully we're gonna have a new teen center for you guys here shortly. Yep. That'll be kinda neat, won't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, how long have you been a member of the club? This club, I've been here for like two years almost. Uh -huh. um, I've been going to Jefferson for a while. I'll say five years there. Good. So. so you have a good time there? Yeah. All right, let's see who else we got here. Who's the other chef? What's your name? Travanti Santoni. I like that. That's a cool name. Yes. And what grade are you in? Seventh. And you go to where? PJs. Are you in school with him? Is that a good thing? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Are you guys good buddies? Yeah. That's good. So how do you like the club? I like it a lot. It's yeah. Fun. You go to the teen club too? Yeah. Are you excited about maybe we'll have a new uh, teen center soon? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be kind of a lot of fun, won't it? Yeah. How long have you been going to the club? Uh, just from last summer. Last summer? Well, I'm glad you're uh, part of that club, huh? You having a good time there? Yep. All right. Let's go check and see who we got over here. Who's this guy? I'm Matt Sierra. Matt? And yep. uh, uh, what grade are you in? I'm in 10th uh, grade. 10th grade. And you go where? I go to Spash. Spash? Yeah. Yep. Now, were you just uh, in a competition? Oh, no. That this year it was Dan. Dan, now you were last year yeah, though. I was last I, year. Yeah. Last year. And and how did you do down there? I did pretty good. It wasn't bad. Yeah. He had to give a speech. It was pretty pretty neat, and uh, did an awesome job. So, were you youth of the year last year? Yeah, I was youth of the year last year. He's our this year's youth of the year. And this guy is. I am Dan. Dan O'Donnell. Yeah. And what grade are you in? I'm same grade as him, tenth. You guys go to school together. I'm actually homeschooled this year, but we right. went to school together the past right. couple of years. So. Good. And you just got done with competition, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, I heard you did really, really well. Well, thank you very much. I mean, I did yep. my best, so. That, well, that's all that counts. Yep. So you were youth of the year this year? Yes, I was. Awesome. Congratulations to both you guys. Thank thanks you very for much. coming out to help. Yeah, Appreciate thanks for it. So thanks how for do you like the club? Come. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's a good it's place. It's fun. Yeah. So you guys doing some mentoring for some of the younger kids at all? Yeah, actually, this is for Keystone. It's our teen leadership club, and um, yeah, so 
hopefully we can get some people over here and sell some brats and hot dogs. Right. President, I'm vice president. Awesome, cool. Well, hopefully we get a new teen center for you guys here shortly. That'll be great. Yep. That'd, That'd be, be awesome. cool, wouldn't it? That'd be yeah. awesome. Huh? Yeah. That'd be guys have a lot bigger place to, to hang out and do stuff. Definitely. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.